Hi, my name is Shi Tian from PictureHealer.com. Today, I'm going to show you how to sew a guinea pig cuddle cup. It's a small bed with a lower front end, so the piggy can go in and out easily. And we are going to use a sewing machine. I have a Singer 201. It's a vintage. You can buy it secondhand online, maybe from eBay. And uh, you will need fleece material. You can buy the straw fleece from the store easily. It's very cheap or from the craft store. And you will need polyester filling or any pillow filling will be okay. And that's it. Let's get started. You can decide how big you want your guinea pig bed to be. I know my guinea pig is about maybe 7 or 8 inches long so I want it to be around 10 inches the first part I draw the button circle and it doesn't have to be exact circle I have it more like oval shape and I want the front to be the lower part so the piggy can go in and out easily and the back side is higher so I already know my piggy is about maybe 6-7 inches long so I make the whole width about 10 inch and then I know the front part I want it to be lower it's about from here to here so I measure it it's about 8 inches long so we know the front 8 inch will be lower and the back will be higher you can decide the same allowance usually it's half inch or one centimeter um, you can measure it if you want I just kind of eyeball it and draw the dash line so that's the line we are going to cut and we can make two pieces of this so we can put the cotton in between the next is to measure the piece on the top that stands in the back and also in the front and we use our measuring tape and stand it up to measure and I have it about 32 about 31 32 inches this pattern is a top piece I draw half of it and you can put it on the folded fabric so when you open it up it's full 32 inches now I draw 16 inches first you measure the total dimension 16 inches and you decide how high you want the wall to be I have 4 inches in the back and 2 inches in the front and I have the folding line in the front because I want the back side to be the, uh, the with the sewing line with the joint also the half of the 8 inch for the front opening is 4 inches because it's folded in half so we only need to measure half of it that's four inches and we have to make sure the transition from the two inch to four inch is smooth so we just draw a line to even out the angle and we cut two pieces of that on the top two folded piece and the two piece in the bottom now I have fabric fold in half and I place the pattern on the top remember this one had folded side on the short side so the folded side goes to this side this side it will not be cut and this side has the same allowance and it will be cut so we place place down like that cut it out and make another one we need two pieces since we already have the fabric fold over we can 
just lay this pattern on top and cut once and we have two pieces done. If your fabric has a certain pattern, you probably want to make sure your pattern is centered in this circle. Also make sure you have a good scissor that's for cutting fabric. The regular scissor will not work very well with the fabric this thick. So that's what it looks like after cut out four pieces. So next thing we are going to sew the round pieces with the right side facing out and we are going to stuff the cotton in the middle and you will see the sewing line from the outside. We are going to do the same for the top piece and we are going to show the sewing line from outside for the bottom area. So decide which side is the outside and which side is the wrong side. I'm going to use this one for the top and this one for the bottom and I'm going to start sewing all the way around and leave an area to put all the cotton. So I bring my piece to the sewing machine and I make sure I have my seam allowance. For me it's about half inch to the right so from the needle to the edge of fabric should be half inch or whatever your seam allowance is. So I start with a few stitches of the back stitch and then go forward. Now we are about two or three inches left. I'm going to do a few back stitches and take it off the machine. Now that's what it looks like. I'm going to stuff in some polyester fillings through the hole and the line will be still exposed outside the stitch line. That's how it looks like after I put my stuffing in. You should make it look a little bit fuller than you like because over time it's going to compress down and after a wash in the washer it might go flatten a little bit too. So now I'll just sew over this two inches and close the hole. Again I'm just going to go back stitch for a few stitches and then go forward. Just overlap a little bit, maybe half inch, one inch of the previous sewing line and then back stitch again for a few stitches. And now you are done with the bottom piece. That's what it looks like. For the top piece, I place both pieces right side facing each other. So the wrong side is on the outside and I sew the seam allowance on the top including the curve all the way to the end. You just have to go slow on the curve. So when we connect the end pieces, we open up and it's like that. We sew a line here and also on the other side we saw a line here. Do back stitch and then forward with a long stitch. Mm 
I'll do backstitch again. That's what it looks like. And to do another side, just turn it over. And line it up. And we'll do the same. We saw a line on the sewing machine. Now that's what it looks like from the back side. And we just turn the whole piece inside out so the right side is facing out now. So that's what it looked like after we turn it right side out. You can see the front part is lower and the back side is higher. And we just have to sew a line in the bottom and uh, leave space and to put the cotton or I prefer to insert the cotton as you go so it doesn't matter where you start it you can start with the front side or the back side I'm just going to start with the front and make sure the seam allowance is the correct measurement. This thing will be shown outside, but you will not see it at the end after we finish everything. We'll do the same backup stitch and then continue going straight. After several inches, we try to insert the cotton so it's easier to insert because after you finish everything then it's harder to put cotton in some corners. You don't have to put a lot, just enough. Leave some empty space in the front so it's easier to sew. And we continue sewing. Okay, now we keep inserting more stuff in. Now we are almost at the end. We are the last few inches. So make sure you also stuff the first part that I didn't stuff enough here. And just keep it filled up. Okay, now we feel the whole thing is fluffy enough. You can start to sew up the holes. And just overlap a few inches of the previous stitch line and go back. Okay, now you're done with this piece. Now that's what the top piece look like. This is the front, that's the back side. So the next step is pretty easy. We just have to connect this sewing line with this sewing line. Make sure you have it in the correct direction. 
I have it wider on both sides and shorter in the front and back. So I will do the same here. This is the shorter one will be my front. So it will look like this. And I can just turn over and make sure the sides are aligned. We just want to make sure the side you want to be on the top is on the top now. And after we saw the line, and we'll flip this like that and hide the seam inside so it looks all finished even from the back. So now you decide which one you want to be on the top and then just align the top and bottom and then sew a line around the previous sewing line. It might be a little bit difficult to sew because there will be four layers. Just have to go slowly and this is the last step. One way to hold the fabric together is to use the clips. See I have four. You don't need a lot, just the four will be enough for this size. I will start sewing in between two pins. So it's easier to keep everything in position. I'll start from here. And you really have to align up and press down all the stuffing because it's pretty thick. So just pre press down as much as you can. And just start sewing. If you have zigzag, you can do the zigzag too. Or if you have a serger, you can use a serger. You'll be faster. Okay, now I put this in, click down, put down the presser foot. We we'll do the same thing, back up stitch a few, a few stitch, and then go forward. So that's what it looks like after you sew all around. And the next step is a magic where you turn everything the other way. So we hide the seam allowance. We hide the seams. And that's what it looks like. We're all done. And that's what the backside looks like. Mm -hmm.